the issue will be gone by the end of this video. I'm gonna run the shit out of this car. And it works. And it works. So today, I'm going to fix my timing chain tensioner. It's a common problem with S2000s. I can hear a slight tick under there, and 99.9% um, .9 sure with my uh, non-certified mechanic skills, that's my timing chain tensioner. Um, just the spring, the internal spring is just getting loose, um, and the chain's kind of rattling a little bit. So hopefully you can hear it and see what I'm talking about, and if you have this issue, this will most likely be the fix. So hopefully you can hear that and the timing chain tensioner is right down here, uh, right behind your airbox. So here's the airbox and there's the timing chain tensioner right down there. So basically all you have to do is take uh, the top part of your airbox off, unplug this and you'll have a 10 millimeter and eight millimeter ratcheting uh, crescent wrenches or sockets or not ratcheting, but if they don't ratchet, they suck. It takes forever to use a crescent wrench that way. Um, but anyway, um, I'm gonna replace it. You're gonna see me replace it and the issue will be gone by the end of this video. All right, so if you're gonna work on your car from the side, you're gonna wanna cover your fender or if you don't care about your fender, <laughs> don't cover it, but my paint is relatively decent, so I want to keep it okay looking. And uh, I'm going to be accessing the uh, timing chain tensioner from this side anyway. So cover up the fender, wait for everything to cool down because there's a heat shield for your header. Um, everything is still hot. Um, Valve cover is still pretty dang warm, not going to burn your hand, but I'd imagine that heat shield is probably a lot hotter. So um, I'm going to let everything cool down for a couple minutes, um, then get back to it and take it out. Also, you're going to want to unplug this right here. So Or not unplug it. Um, either way works. But... All right, let's get back to that one. I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, so really there was just a dust shield. All I had to do was pull it off. Um, that makes it a lot easier. Gives me a little more room. I also took off the uh, cover for the air filter. So that'll give me a little bit more room here. Um, and now all I need to do is unbolt that right there. And then there's another bolt right back here. And I think what I'm gonna use is just a 10 millimeter socket, um, a deep socket. That way it'll get the ratchet out of the way of everything and should be good to go. All right, so, okay. So I got the two bolts loose. Now I'm just holding the socket and uh, unscrewing it by hand. And this feels, uh, this feels weird. I don't know what's going on. This bolt feels bent for some reason, and that is not a good sign. It's a little scary. Um, yeah, it looks a little bent. I don't know how that got bent. Um, the person putting it in might, might have already replaced this. My car has 85,000 miles on it, and sometimes these things go after 30,000 miles. So this could have been replaced already. And it's very possible the person over tightened it or, or did something weird. Um, the threads look fine, as you can see, but for whatever reason, the head of the bolt looks um, bent. So I don't know what's going on there. It's kind of uh, kind of alarming. So I'm going to pull off the timing chain tensioner and see what's going on. All right, guys. <clears throat> so if the timing chain uh, tensioner is a little hard to pull out. I took a three inch C-clamp and put it on either side of the uh, 10 millimeter bolts down in here. You can see 
um, the actual screw side is up this way. And uh, all you'll need to do is pull on it and it'll pull the timing chain tensioner right out of there. Nice and easy. Um, then you can ex look at it, inspect it. Look how clean that oil is. You can barely even see any oil on there. <clears throat> but anyway, trusty uh, headlamp, because I usually can't see anything and I don't want to hold a, a flashlight with my other hand. So anyway, pull it out and I'm going to show you the new unit. It's a Ballade Sports, $255, um, heavy duty, everything, um, much better than the stock Honda unit. Uh, yeah, this is stock. So I'm going to replace this one, and that one has a lifetime guarantee. So $255, bucks, uh, hopefully never have to replace it ever again is a pretty good deal in my eyes. All right, so here's a new unit. Nice uh, CNC'd aluminum piece right here. Um, make sure you put it back in the same way that you took the old one out. You can see the flat edge is on the left side. I'll put that right back in there. You can see there's a um, butterfly nut right there. I'll leave that in there. Once I bolt it in, I'll back out this butterfly nut and that will release the tension on the spring behind this piston and this will push into the uh, timing chain and uh, create the tension there. And then once I take this off, I'll just put the backing plate on and uh, nice and easy. All right, so you're gonna wanna put a little bit of uh, oil around these O-rings um, just to create a better seal when you first put it in. Um, so I'm gonna go over to my wall of oils. Um, here we go, 1030. Put that a little bit around the rings, we'll be good to go. Now that I've got a thin layer of oil all around it and uh, brand new gloves because I don't want to get oil all over my tools and, and the engine bay, um, I'm going to place this back in the way I got it. It should slide in super easily. If it doesn't slide in easily, um, then something went wrong, but nothing should go wrong. You're just unbolting two bolts and taking something out and putting it back in. So if you know how to do that, you should be able to put it back in correctly. So here we go. Okay, um, quick tip. If you encounter any resistance while putting in your timing chain tensioner back into your motor, <clears throat> you will need to hand crank your motor very slowly. Put it in neutral, um, get a wrench. I'm using a three-fourths. Um, I know it's not the right size, but it's doing the job and, and I'm, I don't have to turn it hard enough to, to ruin that uh, bolt in there. So. Hand cranking it until I get clearance extremely slowly. Um, once I get the clearance, I'll bolt it back up and I'll be good. So if you get that issue, hand crank the motor very slowly. You'll probably only have to turn it maybe a quarter turn, maybe a third, um, and you'll be ready to go. All right, so here you can see there's about a quarter inch of space. Um, and I'm encountering some resistance. So I'm going to pull it back out. Take the three quarters wrench down in here. Uh, hopefully you can see that down in there. Turn it very slowly. And let's see if that's enough to do the trick. So timing chain tensioner. Um, flat side right here on the left side. Let's put it back in. Okay, looks like there's still 
Oh, there we go. Clicked in. So I'm gonna bolt it back up with those two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, take off this butterfly bolt after I've bolted the uh, timing chain tensioner back in and um, put the cover on the back and we'll be ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna hand tighten the bolts. There we go, now I'll use the socket with my hand to spin it around, just hand tight because I will use a torque wrench to finish these off because you do not want to over tighten these. All right, that's hand tight. This one right down here, hand tight. Time to get the torque wrench. All right, so you're gonna wanna torque the two 10 millimeter bolts down to nine foot pounds. So I have my torque wrench. And I'm gonna tighten it down to nine foot pounds. It should feel relatively light. There we go. Oops. <laughs> so that's nine foot pounds. You can see it's practically nothing. Here's the other one. You'll be able to see how easily it, it stops itself. Get in there. There. That was it. Nine foot pounds. So now undo the butterfly bolt in there, or nut, I mean. Then you should be able to hand loosen that. So this comes out of the back, and now your extra parts. So here is the backing plate. Here are the two bolts you can see for the two holes, and that um, butterfly nut and bolt I took out will be replaced by this. All you'll need is a flathead screwdriver. Screw that baby back in there, put the backing plate on, and uh, that's what you'll see. You'll see it finished. All right, so there you have it. Beautiful uh, timing chain tensioner back on there, Ballade Sports. Should last a lifetime. So I'm gonna plug um, everything back in, put the uh, air filter box back on, start it up, and we'll see if I still have that, um, that rattle. My suspicion is that it'll be gone. All right, it's all in there. Engine's running perfect, smoothly, idling, just about 1,000 RPM. And it works, and it works, and it works. Woo! So there it is. It's fixed, our work's good, and maintenance first, modification second. So now that I've maintained absolutely everything in the car, changed every fluid, um, every single little thing I could do uh, to maintain the car, now it's time to start modifying it for the track. So much better videos to come, less boring, more cool stuff, less maintenance stuff, um, but it had to be done because I want this thing, I'm gonna run the shit out of this car. So if I'm gonna run it hard, I wanna maintain it.